I want to show a video about collecting royalties. I think there's people of all different levels in here. Some of you guys have already released music. Some of you guys haven't. Let's get into it. Here's our distributor. They get your music out onto those platforms. Now, the most basic way of thinking about how you make money off of this is your distributor puts a song on Spotify and iTunes and everything. Somebody streams your song off of Spotify. Somebody buys your song off of iTunes. That money, you would think, just goes to your distributor and then goes to you. You get paid. That is the most basic form of it, but there's more to it than just that. So let's say your distributor uploads your song for you to iTunes. Now, you're doing a 99 cent download, and iTunes is going to take 30% cut from every single download that you uh, do. So say you make one sale, and iTunes takes their 30% cut, so now you're at 69 cents for that download. 69 cents should be paid to your distributor only if that iTunes download was made in the US. If it was made in the US, then all 69 cents is sent to your distributor for you to be paid. If that iTunes download was made in, say, the UK or Germany or Italy or somewhere else, some other country, it's only going to pay you 60 cents and 9.1 cents is going to be going to your mechanical royalty, which, which is the mechanical royalty, and that's paid to that country's CMO, which is held specifically just for the publisher to collect. So it won't be paid to your distributor. And... Mechanical royalties are something by law that have to be taken from every sale, every stream of music to be paid directly to the publisher. Now, in uh, the U.S., you don't really have to worry about mechanical royalties because they're included in every stream and every sale and they're paid to your distributors uh, directly. So you're already collecting that. So you don't have to worry about it. But if you're making sales in different countries, those mechanical royalties are collected by each individual country and held there for the publisher. Now, unless you're going to call up every single one of these countries and speak their language and be like, hey, you have money uh, from my mechanical royalties that I made off of a sale uh, in your country, then you're going to be leaving that money on the table. And that necessarily, it might not necessarily be a bad thing yet, unless you're really big, unless you're making a bunch of sales overseas. So if you're only making 10, 20 sales, something like that, like small amount of sales overseas, then it might not be worth the next step, which is publishing administration. So let's go ahead and talk about publishing administration and whether or not you'd actually want to do it. So publishing administration is something like the company Song Trust. Song Trust is highly recommended by like BMI, by uh, DistroKid, by all kinds of different places on a way to collect your mechanical royalties paid to the publisher uh, overseas and everything like that. So Song Trust, they don't take any of your publishing. They simply administer it and you keep 100% of your publishing ownership. They don't, it's not a co-publishing deal. It's not anything like that. It's administration only. So what they do is they take a percentage and they charge an upfront one-time fee to get signed up with them. So you are in a contract with them. So once you sign up with an administration publisher, just know that you can't jump around to other ones right away. It's, a, I think, either one year or maybe more. I'm not 100% sure, but it is a contract that you are in once you sign up with an administration publisher. So say you go with Song Trust to administer your publishing and collect those overseas mechanical royalties. Now, they charge $100 to get signed up, and they take 15% of all publishing money that they collect for you. Now, is that worth it or not? And that's going to all depend on how many sales are you making overseas uh, in different countries. If you're only doing a couple and you're only generating 9.1 cents per sale, let's say you make 100 sales in Germany. And that would be 100 times 9.1 cents. So that would make it $9.10. When you get your money in DistroKid or whatever distributor you use, United States Mechanical Royalty is going to be included in the money you make off that music in your distribution. When you sell music overseas, they hold on to your mechanical royalty, which is required by law. So what needs to happen is you need a publishing administrator to collect that overseas mechanical royalties. I didn't 
realize how much I was selling overseas until I signed up for my publishing administrator. I happen to use SongTrust. You can go to songtrust.com, you can sign up. I think it's like a hundred bucks one-time fee. I believe it's worth it if you're a career musician. Look at other options. I'm not sponsored by them or anything like that, but that's who I go with and that's who collects my mechanicals overseas. So I get paid quarterly from SongTrust. That is a publishing administration contract. It's non-exclusive. I think it's well worth it. Let's continue. $9.10 is now sitting there for you in Germany. Uh, but you would have to pay $100 to song trust to get signed up with them and you'd have to pay 15 percent of that nine dollars to be able to collect it so that's when it's not really worth it unless you're making really large amount of sales overseas then it's not quite worth signing up with the publishing administrator and collecting that mo collecting that money it's kind of just cheaper to let it sit there until you are actually making enough sales to make it worth collecting. He's been right on up until this point. I would just add a little something to it. Don't underestimate how much money you may have sitting overseas if you've been releasing a lot of music. You may have a lot of money sitting overseas and not know it, and you won't know it until you sign up for a publishing administrator. So since it's only 99 bucks, I highly recommend it if you've been releasing music for a while. I personally would say don't sign up with Song Trust unless you know that your sales and your streams are just really, really high overseas and it's worth paying that $100 and 15% of everything that they collect. That's mechanical royalties broken down by how you collect them and where they're held and everything like that. Now let's look at the other side of it, which is performance royalties. Now performance royalties is separate than mechanical and uh, distribution money. So performance royalties are paid to you by your PRO, which is your performance rights organization. And that is something like BMI or ASCAP. Uh, I personally am registered with BMI and they collect money from radio play, from streaming, even on Spotify. If you have a song streaming on Spotify, you're not only making money from your distrib uh, distributor and the mechanical royalty that's paid out, you're also uh, earning a performance royalty when that stream is happening. So because this is earning a performance royalty, the only way to collect that is to go through your performance rights organization. So like I said, I'm with uh, BMI. And when you sign up with BMI, uh, or if you want to go with ASCAP, that's fine. You can uh, choose whichever one you want. But once you sign up with one, you're stuck with them. You, you can't sign up with both of them. It's just one that you choose. Now... There are two different accounts that you sign up with with a PRO. There's a writer's account and a publishing account. So a writer's account is paid half of the money. A publishing account is paid the other half of the money, assuming you own full rights to that song. Every time a song is uh, streamed, there is money being made for the writer and the publisher, and that royalty is paid out to your performance rights organization. So PRO pays you out, your distributor pays you out, the mechanicals, depending on where in the world that you're streamed or sold, it's either paid to the distributor or through uh, an admin publisher. Let's look at another source of income from your music, and that's sound exchange. If your music is out on SiriusXM or on non-interactive streaming sites like Pandora's like Shuffle Play, where you don't really get to pick exactly what song you're listening to, you just kind of put in what you're kind of wanting to listen to and then it shuffles it. That's non-interactive. That's all paid out through Sound Exchange. Sound Exchange is free to sign up. You can just go ahead and sign up with them and start collecting money if your music is on any of those services or any of those platforms. If it's not on it, you're not going to have any money in there. But if your music is on any of those, then you are owed uh, royalties only paid through Sound Exchange. So that's not that's separate than the PRO separate than your distributor and it's not a mechanical royalty it's something separate so those are the different ways to make money just from your song being out on itunes or spotify now there are other things like youtube's content id system which pays out uh, they all it's like a combination of these things that are all collected into youtube content id and then paid out to whoever registered it so like say AdRev or vidia or any of those aggregators that get your music into the content ID system, any uh, money generated from ads using that uh, beat or uh, song or whatever, it could then be paid to the aggregator and then paid to you. So that's another 
way to make money if you're uploading it to the content ID system. Just to sum it up, it all starts with your distributor. Say you wanna have a release. You wanna get your music on Spotify, Apple Music, iTunes, Tidal, Amazon, etc. The first thing you're gonna wanna do or need to do is go through a distributor. So you upload your stuff to something like DistroKid. I like DistroKid personally not endorsed you pay annually but then you collect all your money they actually give you a hundred percent of your royalties on the back end other distributors might take nine percent another thing i like about DistroKid is it seems to be really fast when you upload your music it's the shortest time to getting it actually uploaded DistroKid, from what i understand is a little more hands-on so if you want help with a release a lot of times you'll have to delete it and re-upload it which I actually think is a better thing because if you need to change a release, you'd go into the dashboard, you handle it yourself. You don't need to wait to get on the phone or get on a chat with someone with customer service. It's really quick. And the times when I've had issues, they've actually been really good at getting back to me and communicating with me. From there, your music is gonna get distributed. And as he said, a mechanical royalty needs to be paid from that music. So DistroKid is gonna collect your United States mechanical royalties as part of their payout. But overseas, each country has their own performance rights organization and they pay their own mechanical royalties. So the way you're going to collect mechanical royalties overseas, you are going to sign up with a publishing administrator, call them up and ask them to pay out the mechanical royalties. There are companies out there whose job is to collect mechanical royalties overseas. Song Trust is the one that I chose. That's the standard one for independent artists as far as I know. They're gonna collect mechanical royalties on your music overseas for you. When I first signed up with Song Trust, not gonna lie, it took a long time for me to see any money. From what I understand, it needs to go through the whole process. It took them a year to get in touch with all the societies and collect my money. But now that I'm in a flow with them, I get a pretty good amount of money every quarter from them. Another Another thing I like about Song Trust is when you register your songs on Song Trust, they will register it if you have ASCAP as your PRO with ASCAP or if you have BMI as your PRO with BMI. So I don't ever have to register my music on the ASCAP portal. When I register it with Song Trust, they automatically register it with my ASCAP account. That's a benefit of Song Trust and they collect money you would never see just on your PRO. That leads me to you have to have a PRO. If you don't have a PRO, you should have one right now. After this stream, go get a PRO. That is ASCAP or BMI. I can't really speak on the differences. A lot of people have different experiences with one or another. I've been an ASCAP member since I was 18 years old. BMI is on a 200% scale, ASCAP's on a 100% scale. It's still the same idea, just different numbers. Say hypothetically you're signing up with ASCAP, you wanna have both a writer's account and a publisher's account. I didn't know that up until about five years ago. The reason you need to have both is because the way they do payouts, if you are only signed up as a writer and you're not signed up as a publisher, you're missing half your check or you're missing a portion of your check. As you sign up for your publisher account, they're going to have you choose an entity, which is your name. So mine is Decap Music 101, my publishing entity. Other than your PRO, publishing administration, another thing you'll need is Sound Exchange, which is free to sign up for. You wanna register your whole catalog with Sound Exchange. Anytime you release a new song, you wanna submit that to them. But Sound Exchange collects non-interactive streaming. When your music gets played on something like Pandora or when it gets played on XM Radio, but when you listen on Pandora, they cannot go to a specific song in your catalog. It's non interactive. So Sound Exchange will take care of that. You can sign up at soundexchange.com. Free to sign up. Then another one he mentioned is Content ID. I use a Content ID company, but I have my questions about it. It hasn't been very good. I'm not going to say their name. Once I find a good one, I will report on it. The one I chose, they keep, I believe, 20% of the revenue, which is pretty good. It's better than a lot of them. Some of them collect like 50% of your revenue. So 20% I thought was reasonable. But as a company, I'm not too sure about them because some videos on YouTube with millions and millions and millions and hundreds of millions of plays with my music on it, and I'm not seeing money from that. I've hit them up with no luck, very disappointing, but I'm looking for a good content ID company. If any of you guys can help me, I'm open to it. DCS Lefty said, it's crazy how little this stuff is talked about. And it's true, anything I can be of help, I want to. This stuff can get very, very 
confusing, and very heavy. Even for me at this point in the game, being in music for two decades, this stuff is still confusing for me. I've taken music law classes. I've spent times with so many music attorneys asking them questions about this. There's so much lack of clarity. So I want to do anything I can do for you guys to help expose it. And as I learn new things, I want to bring that to you guys. As you learn new things, I want you to help bring it to me. We're a community. We need to educate each other and help each other to have the tools and understand how this all works. Yeah.